his profile, a window on life in the military community. And now your host, Jennifer Braden. Hi, welcome to the show. The mountains near Bologna, Italy, hold special memories for the Army's 10th Mountain Division who fought there during World War II. The taking of Riva Ridge enabled them to push on to Mount Belvedere, a key stronghold during their liberation of Italy. Former and current 10th Mountain soldiers returned to the battle site 50 years later to reenact the fateful climb. AFN's Air Force Sergeant John Haynes gives us the sights and sounds of their passage. It's really wet. Uh, trail's muddy. They'll start making better time now once they get their harnesses on and move out the fixed rope. But it's going as expected so far. Scott, they're going to they're gonna stick right where they're at. Yeah. They're going to traverse how long that ledge where they're laying the rope. Yeah, this is a travel log, all right. You want this with or without teeth? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with or without <laughs> hey Scott, jerk the rope and get his attention. This is the route we went up. Yeah, we're all mixed up now. And doing a fine job of it. Okay. <laughs> How's it going up there? Thank you very much. Ooh, God. That was too much for my leg, huh? Hi! again in another 50? Yeah, oh, we, we're sure. planning on it. We've, sure. got it. we've got it marked on our calendar. <laughs> right. Well, I have a philosophy. There are two kinds of people. Those who are made for lots of kids and those who are like me, one at a time at short intervals, and I won't pull my hair out. Well, AFN's Air Force Sergeant Joni Hogsey met a guy who's definitely one of those kid people. We'll see ya. Sometimes I wonder why I went into this profession. I mean, most people, they have a job to do and uh, everything is there for them to do it and no one's fighting them to do their job. And one of the, the strangest things I think in my job is just even to get the information that I need is a struggle. I mean, I can't just go up and stick a stethoscope and listen to the lungs. I can't just look in an ear. I can't have the patient tell me most of the time what's wrong with them. And that's, that's probably the biggest challenge for the pediatrician's job is just getting the information before even you know making any decision as to what's going on, and one of the things that I've I've found that works for me is uh, I, I examine my patients usually just in the parent's lap, or I have a, a large couch in my office and on the couch next to the parent. Look, I got it. Good job. Okay, blow it out now. See if you can blow it right out of my hand, real hard. Blow it. Good job. All right. Actually, in the military, we have a higher standard. We have less infant mortality. We have better uh, results. And part of the, 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 the reason is the access to care. And that's why you see a lot of things changing in the United States. And actually, they're changing more line, along the lines of what the military already does. It's a, somewhat of a socialized medicine. And that ability for parents to come in, get vaccines, have access to a physician early, not having to sit at home and saying, you know, well, this is going to cost me money to bring my child in. I'm not going to do it. That has actually uh, made the military standards for, for that type of thing higher than the general population for the United States. Is that good? Is that good? <laughs> you know, all it takes is a kid to come in with a, a, you know, the hat on backwards or do something like that. And the rest of your day, it, you know, you're smiling for the rest of your day. So many times as adults, it's like we don't want to smile. We don't go through the day. We want to be miserable. We want to be grouchy. And then the kids just come in and, and they make you laugh. And then for the rest of the day, you know, everything's fine. 